So Scott, thanks for doing this with us today. That's all right. I'm just a little bit shook up, aren't I? Because we've just met Donnie Yen. Just met Donnie Yen. And uh, it was pretty special. Bucket list stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. And you've had an insanely busy year. I mean, what you had Criminal, Grimsby, Savage Dog last year. And then Accident mm. Man, uh, Incoming Triple Threat, Boyka 4. Yeah. Why are you so busy? Do you ever take a break? <laughs> I just love to work, man. Um, I spent a lot of time not working when I was struggling trying to get my foot in the door, so probably should turn down more than... Yeah, I probably worked too much this summer. Probably should have turned down. But I just love to work. And it's a, you know, it's a privilege. Um, so I just, I like to keep working. It's very hard for me to turn stuff down. I just want to keep working. I love it. Well, I mean, I've been following your career for, for years. Um, obviously, to most audiences, Doctor Strange broke you to, uh, to, to the world. Um, what was it like to punch Benedict Cumberbatch in the face? Oh, blissful. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> but actually, I think I remember... Well, yeah. So I have to run up uh, the wall, and then I jump onto this railing, and then I jump off the railing, and I had to side kick him in the chest okay. and it was actually Benedict Cumberbatch because the thing about being Doctor Strange is there's no mask so he had to do quite a bit of it himself so on one of the takes and it's the one they used I wasn't quite getting close enough so I just thought oh come on just go for it and I jumped off the railing and I hit him hard in the chest and he, bam, and he bounced back off the railing oh! and it hurt his back a little bit but he was cool about it Yeah. but I remember thinking oh, you were a bit too hard there, Scott. But he was cool. And then when I punched him in the face, and as the Astral Ghost fight, I think actually when I did that, I was actually punching nothing. Oh, right. Uh, and they mixed it all together. Can't remember. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed watching you punch him in the face too. <laughs> no, he's a great guy. You came up through the world of stunts, um, uh, such as in Wolverine. Um, I'm always reminded of uh, when Rob Cohen was casting Dragon the Bruce Lee's story he wanted to cast an actor that could learn martial arts rather than a martial artist who could act mm. as someone who's a martial artist who and an actor do you find that the industry views you more as a stuntman more than an actor and or the other way around do you have any challenges because of your stunt martial art background getting yeah, cast in yeah. certain films well with uh, you know with Wolverine I that's why that I have the, the credit of Weapon 11 because I was adamant that I wasn't going to be a stuntman uh, even though they offered me that uh, I was basically a stuntman but I wanted to get a credit uh, because it works against you if you want to be seen as a legitimate actor you're either one or the other yeah. at least that's the way they saw it or supposedly see it but um, you know look what is Michelle Yeoh? is she a martial artist? Is she an action star? Is she a dramatic actor? I believe that she's now the new captain of the Starship, Starship Enterprise, yeah. right? So what, what are we talking about here? It's just people's bullshit perceptions. Clearly, I'm an actor that's very good at martial arts. Mm -hmm. I play roles that are not me, convincingly. I have done since day one. I started off doing Shakespeare at drama school, you know. Clearly, I've got better... Um, and a lot of that was a confidence issue that I had, I think. But um, I've continually got better as an actor. I arrived fully formed as a martial artist because I put more effort into that as a kid. But, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a good actor who's very good at martial arts. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you have great working relationships with directors like Isaac Florentine. And you've done The Undisputed films with uh, close range yeah. you guys have a great working relationship he knows how to shoot action you know how to do backflips in the air and kick people in the face yeah. um, do you guys have any more upcoming projects um, maybe Ninja 3 or uh, we'd love to do Ninja 3 but I don't think the production company is uh, willing to go down that road unless there was some sort of uh, I don't know push for it yeah. like there was for Boyka uh, but we'd love to do it. Um, we'd love to do another boycott. We have to make sure that the new one uh, survives the uh, piracy piracy yeah. issue. Uh, otherwise, if they don't make money on it, they, they won't want to make another one. Um, but I love working with Isaac. Um, 
and uh, it's just finding the, the next project. Because with close range, we did the best we could. We had a very small budget. And, yeah. uh, the way Isaac shoots is very particular about the way he shoots in sequence, uh, and you kind of need a little bit more time. You can't just put three cameras up, shaky cam style, and, and shoot everything, which is quicker. Yeah. Isaac is quite particular in the way he does it, so you need a bit more time. Um, to get the quality of the other movies. That's a six week shoot for Ninja 2. Um, so, you know, with the way the landscape is now, with the, uh, the budget for films, it's difficult. But, you know, we, we, we're trying to. Um, Hollywood is also determined to remake The Raid. Uh, they got mm. Joe Carnahan, and Gareth Evans has always said he's a big fan of yours and he's going to be executive yeah. producing it. Yeah. Has that, has your name been mentioned in regards to that? Because if they're going to do the whole. Yeah. You know, SWAT team under fire. There's going to be. From what I've seen of the interviews, uh, I did listen to an interview with um, Carnahan and Frank Grillo. Yeah, because uh, Frank Grillo is. Yeah, it. and his vision, from what I could gather, reading between the lines, is to make it very realistic. Uh, that, that's the impression I got. So for me, um, as uh, someone that can do fights like what we had in the original raid. Mm. Um, I think I'd be wasted. So if they wanted to do it and actually compete with the raid, yeah. I could help them. <laughs> but if I think they, they're going to go a different route. Well, Grillo's actually uh, taken over from you as the villain in Wolf Warrior 2. Yeah. Because um, you were great in the, the first one. Mm. Uh, that is a franchise that, with Grillo appearing, it seems to have international appeal. Yeah. Um, what was it like making that movie? Because that looked pretty relentless it was tough it was a uh, pretty low budget film really um, and it was in Nanjing one of the hottest places in China in August the hottest month wearing all the military gear it was uh, very very hot um, but I was very happy for Wu Jing that the film was a success because he was very passionate about it put a lot of uh, he wrote you know the, the story was his idea he'd been trying to get the film made for five years or something he put some of his own money into it he risked everything and I'm very happy to see that it paid off in a big way for him. Um, the Russo brothers are involved in the new one. Um, my friend Sam Hargrave, who's a stunt coordinator yeah. for Civil War, has been involved. Uh, so it sounds like it's going to be really, really good. And uh, I'm very happy for you, Jim, because he's a great guy and uh, works very hard and deserves his success. In terms of really good projects, you've wrapped Triple Threat, which... No offence to the Expendables, but Triple Threat sounds like the real Expendables of action cinema with you, Michael Jai White, um, Uko Iwes, Tony Yar, uh, Tiger mm. Chen. Yeah. I can't wait for... What was that like? That's got to have been fantastic. It was brilliant. Had a lot of fun. Everyone on that set, all the actors, uh, everyone was just brilliant to hang around with. Uh, had a great time uh, while I wasn't filming. Because I wasn't filming all the time on that one because I wasn't the lead, so it was a bit of downtime. Um, but yeah, we've we've done our best, you know. We've uh, we've really gone for it with the fights and the action sequences, and uh, you know, hopefully, fingers crossed, we've, we've got a good one. And you're here today to kind of promote your passion project, Accident Man, where you're reuniting again with Michael Jai White. We've got Ray Stevenson from Rome and Punisher yeah. Warzone. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that and what it was like making that project? First of all, Ray Stevenson is excellent in the film. He is a brilliant actor, and what he's done with this character is, uh, I can't remember him doing anything like this before. He gets to play him in two stages as well, a younger version of himself, and it's it's brilliant what he's pulled off. We're very lucky to get him. Um, Accident Man is my passion project. I wanted to make it since I was 15 when I got the comic book, written by Pat Mills and Tony Skinner. Pat Mills also uh, wrote Judge Dredd. Um, very British, definitely wanted to keep it British wrote the script myself with my childhood friend from school, Stu Small. Um, we wrote it together. I optioned the property myself with my own money, got it to the attention of Sony. We've made the movie um, and been seeing the whole thing come, come together. It's been brilliant to be, you know, working very, very closely with our director, Jesse Johnson, because it's definitely my, it's my passion project. And what was great about Jesse with this was he understood that he recognised that I had a vision, and we've really done it together, like uh, like partners, to to put my vision of Accident Man on screen, and um, 
got some great action in it. Uh, it's very British, yeah. which was very important. I wanted to shoot it in London, and um, it's very dark humour, lots of comedy, uh, and it's very different. It's very, very different. Certainly very different to anything I've ever done. But, you know, it's all from this sick, deprived mind. <laughs> so it all makes sense. <laughs> when you see the movie, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a little bit twisted. But it's, <laughs> I'm really happy with it. I, I mean, listen, it's, it's my vision. I just hope everyone likes it as much as I do. But I'm really loving it at the moment. Our composer, Sean Murray, is doing a fantastic job with the music. It's... 80s retro style, you know. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Everyone likes a bit of 80s music. Synth stuff, John Carpenter style stuff. And um, everyone's been delivering the grading. And uh, Tim Mann, the fight coordinator. Uh, Michael Jai White and Ray Park doing fight scenes with them. And Amy Johnston, incredible to see her move. I could She's go on. Um, currently remaking, doing a female version of Bloodsport, isn't she? Yeah, Lady Bloodfight, right? Lady that Blood was made Fight, a few yeah. years ago. It's, it's just been released. Uh, but she's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm really uh, excited about it. And where next? I, mean, I want. I want to get a th theatrical release for this film. Yeah. It deserves it. I'm telling you, it deserves it. So fingers crossed. Well, hopefully, you know, Doctor Strange and a lot of the other films will give you enough clout. I mean, it's just a risk in this day and age. You know, who's in it? Yeah. Um, you know, you got to put 10 million in marketing. We, We'll see, we'll see. It, what it you deserves need, it. Here's what you need. I'm going to tell you, Scott. You tell me. Eco that. needs to get you into Star Wars. Or I'm Tony Arnold sure needs to get you can. into Fast and Furious. I'm not sure or Tony you need to become James Bond. Uh, who's going to. Barbara? Barbara? We can Are get you Barbara listening? on the line. Yeah. Yeah. Um, listen, it's these Hollywood executives that need to take notice. They always kind of ignore me. They do. It's outrageous. I don't know what it is. Do you know? Couldn't even get on the poster for Expendables 2. What the hell was that about? Have you heard how Jean-Claude Van Damme got his big break? Yeah, he did the, the kick over the Menachem kick. Golan's head. Exactly. Maybe you just yeah. need to do that to Barbara Broccoli. Do yeah. not do that to Barbara But I'm, I'm English. I can't be as pushy as, uh, as European types. Yeah. Scott, thank you so much. Thanks, mate. mate. All Cheers. right, then. The Cosmic Shed. Science fact. Science fiction. And everything in between. <laughs>